Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Walking Through the Book of Exodus. I'm your host, Ruel Barksdale, and today we will be looking at the 38th chapter of the Book of Exodus. Before we go, I just want you to hear just a little bit of this, because this, this song is so appropriate. That not only did God bless the children of Israel, but whatever God has done throughout eternity, he, I can say that he did it just for me. Which means you can also say he did it just for you. Mm. Some of the things we go through, some of the things that we come to learn through trials and tribulations, tests, it's all for our good, it's all for our growth, it's all for the perfection of what God has created. And so today we will look at the significance of bronze, which deals with cleansing, which deals with God taking what we have and cleaning it up so that we can go into the Holy of Holies. You've got to go through the bronze before you can get to the gold. So join us as we look at the 38th chapter of this book of Exodus. I don't want to, but I'm going to have to, oh, I'm going to have to shut off this, this beautiful music by Kirk Franklin just for me. Well, today, again, we're going to look at the 38th chapter, uh, and I'm going to read some to you from the Bible teachings and articles of uh, One for Real um, magazine, um, um, the internet magazine, of the, and it, it, I'm reading this to you because it, it does a perfect illustration of of the importance of bronze um, in the Bible. And uh, just let me read some of this for you. And then we'll get to the 38th chapter of the book of Exodus. We can read the Bible in companionship with the author himself and with his help, st uh, steady observation and an inquiring mind that seeks to know more of God we can learn a great deal even from familiar passages or that might seem strange to those who don't know God's ways. So it, it was in this way uh, that the writer came across the Bible meaning of bronze. The writer had come to the last chapter of Jeremiah where King Zed Zedekiah was carted off to Babylon in bronze shackles and made a mental note that the word bronze was used rather than any other metal. But but then I, uh, the writer was con continued reading and, and said, I saw that bronze was mentioned many more times. <clears throat> For example, and the pillars of bronze that were in the house of the Lord and the stands and the, and the bronze sea that were in the house of the Lord. The Chaldeans broke in pieces and carried all the bronze to Babylon. And, and they took away the, the pots and the shovels and the snuffers and the basins and the dishes for, for incense and all the vessels of bronze used to, in the temple service. Also the small bowls and the fish. And he goes on and on and on to talk about all the bronze, 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 bronze. It must have been a devastating time. God's judgment is finally unleashed and the promised exile to Babylon is executed. But notice apart from verse 19, which mentions few items of silver and, and gold, the entire paragraph is describing the bronze paraphernalia from Solomon's temple. When a word is repeated so often in the text, it is well worth digging a little further to find out why. After some investigation, the writer came to understand better why there was so much bronze involved, both the reason for it being there at all and also the spiritual meaning behind it. Solomon's temple was fashioned after God's desert tabernacle, which we've been studying over the last few weeks, over the last actually two months. We've been looking at how God told Moses, this is exactly how I want you to build the tabernacle. And then we finally got to the place where the tabernacle was being built. There were luxurious colors and fabrics and, and designs and metals used, making the most of of what they had gotten from Egypt 400 years back pay for all the slave labor. But here is the critical piece of information. 
Exodus gives instructions that the items inside the tabernacle were to be made of gold, but everything outside of the tabernacle was to be made of bronze. Copious amounts of bronze were required to construct various aspects of God's sanctuary, both in the desert and in the temple. The bronze for the tabernacle's accoutrements came from Egypt, and Solomon's bountiful wealth provided all the bronze for the temple, so much of it, in fact, that it could not be measured. So that's how all the bronze came to be. Let's, let's, let's get down to the heart to the heart of this. What does bronze mean? Bronze deals with God's cleansing, uh, the atonement and the cleansing from sin, uh, to be covered and clean. Bronze is where God's judgment deals with sin. Only then can a person enter the pure and holy presence of God. And my contention tonight, before we get into this 38th chapter of the book of Exodus, is I understand that God's gifts are without repentance. And you may be gifted. You may be talented. And you may be able to move and affect and touch people with the gift that God has given you. But are you clean? Hmm. Bronze is where God's judgment deals with sin. And before the priest could enter the Holy of Holies, priests had to wash. If you didn't follow God's command on, on how to get into the holiest of holies as a priest, you, you'd end up dead. And I don't want my giftedness. I don't want my talents. I don't want my anointing to be dead. And while I still have the gift, while I still have the talent, what good is it without the anointing? What good is it without the presence of God? And so in this 38th chapter of Exodus, we're going to see bronze. And bronze is set up before you could enter into Holy of Holies so you could be clean. All right, so get your Bible, get your paper, get your pencil, uh, get whatever you need, wherever you have the Word of God. And I'm just going to read through this 38th chapter of the book of Exodus. And as I read through it, I want you to understand with me the importance of bronze. Okay, and if we read from the NIV tonight, and it starts this way. They built the altar of burnt offering of acacia wood, three cubits high. It was square, five cubits long, and five cubits wide. They made a horn at each of the four corners, so that the horns and the altar were of one piece, and they overlaid the altar with bronze. The altar was overlaid with bronze. They made all its utensils of bronze, its pots and shovels, sprinkling bowls, meat forks and fire pans. They made a grating for the altar, a bronze network to be under its ledge. Halfway up the altar, they cast bronze rings to hold the poles for the four corners of the bronze grating. They made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze. They inserted the poles into the ring so that they could so that they would be on the sides of the altar for carrying it. They made it hollow out of boards. Can you see the importance of bronze in the place of sacrificing? Can you see the importance of bronze in the place of, where the altar was? Can you see the, the, the importance of bronze? Is bronze where God's judgment deals with sin? Only then can a person enter the pure and holy presence of God. Next, they made the courtyard. The south side was a hundred cubits long and, and had curtains of finely twisted linen with 20 posts and 20 bronze bases. See, you, you've got to be clean. You In the tabernacle, we're setting up the the. the the standard we're setting up the model we're setting up the, the 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 standard that you've got to you've got to be cleansed before you can even think about entering where God is you might have your gifts you might have your talents but if you don't have the anointing and the anointing can only come from the presence of God and i think so many times people are just satisfied to work in their giftedness, to work in their talentness. 
The west end was 50 cubits wide and, and had curtains with 10 posts and, and 10 bases with silver hooks and bands on the post. The, the east end toward the sunrise was also 50 cubits wide. Curtains 50 cubits long were on the one side of the entrance with three posts and three bases. The curtains 15 cubits long were on the other side of the entrance to the courtyard with three posts and three bases. All the curtains around the courtyard were finely twisted linen. The bases of the posts were bronze. The posts and bands on the posts were silver and their tops were overlaid with silver. So all the posts of the courtyard had silver bands. The curtain uh, for the entrance to the courtyard was of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, yarn and finely twisted linen. The work of the embroiderer. It was 20 cubits long and like the curtains of the courtyard, five cubits high with four posts and four bronze bases. Their hooks and bands were silver, and their tops were overlaid with silver. All the tent pegs of the tap tabernacle and of the surrounding courtyard were bronze. Bronze, bronze, bronze. I'm going to uh, shift down into, well, I'm going to uh, I'll shift down into the, um, I'll just read the whole thing. Uh, starting with 21 all the way through to 30. These are the amounts of the materials used in the, for the tabernacle. The tabernacle of the testimony, which were recorded at Moses' command by the Levites under the direction of Ithamar, son of Aaron, the priest, Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made everything the Lord commanded Moses. With him was Aholiab, son of Ahishamach, of the tribe of Dan, and craftsman and designer, and an embroiderer in blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen. The total amount of gold from the wave offering used for the work on the sanctuary was 29 talents and 730 shekels, according to the sanctuary shekel. The silver obtained from those of the community who were counted in the census was 100 talents and 1,775 shekels, according to the sanctuary shekel, one becca per person, that is a half a shekel, according to the sanctuary shekel. From everyone who had crossed over to those counted 20 years old or more, a total of 603,550 men. The 100 talents of silver were used to cast the bases for the sanctuary and for the curtain, the 100 bases from each 100 talents, one talent for each base. They used the 1,775 shekels to make the hooks for the post, to overlay the tops of the post, and to make their bands. The bronze from the wave offering was 70 talents, 2,400 shekels. They used it to make the bases for the entrance to the tent of the meeting. The bronze altar with its bronze grating and all its utensils, the bases for the surrounding courtyard and those for its entrance, and all the tent pegs for the tabernacle and those for the surrounding courtyard. Did you see the significance of bronze? Bronze was everywhere. Remember, bronze is where God's judgment deals with sin. God is a loving God. But God is a righteous God. God is a pure God. God is a holy God. And if we're to come into the holies of holies in our lives, if we're to have communion with him at a higher level, we've got to be clean. I know you're gifted. I know you're talented. But don't forget to be clean. Ooh, listen, I, I, I am looking forward uh, to the rest of this book. We've only got two more chapters, and then we're going to go into the book of Matthew. And so tell a friend, tell an enemy about our walk through the book of Exodus. And maybe, just maybe, by the time the next week is over, you and your enemy will be friends. I love you. God loves you so much more. See you next week. Bye-bye.